You can greet each other. I don't think we're going to sing. You've already heard me sing enough over a microphone today. I still didn't pray for the offering and call it our food, so I mean, we're off to a good start. Uh, Today, I'm supposed to preach at the end of the month, and so I'd surprisingly been working ahead already for once and had an idea on what I was going to speak about, and so we moved it up to this week as well. Uh, And so now I get to procrastinate till I to the end of the month to try to figure out what I'm going to do then. But but today I wanted to talk about an object. An object many of us have hanging on the walls at our home. We have it hanging at our churches. Some of us wear it on our t-shirts. I think I've seen a few of us today with it on our t-shirts. Some of us wear it around our necks. And yet even more, some of us even tattoo it permanently onto our body. This object, it's a cross. That's what I want to talk about today is the cross. Uh, and I think I was sitting here during our Monday Thursday service and looking at this big massive piece of wood and just kind of was wondering what was significant about it. Because Jeff has told me that Ed cut him the trees down and Jeff went through with a chainsaw and cut it down some more. And I was trying to figure out how something that was used so ugly has become something that we have in our church 2,000 years later. And so when... Jeff was busy trying to do everything this week. I, he came to me and said, we've got to move that cross. And I tried to come up with anything to get us not to move that cross. <laughs> so I decided I'd talk about the cross today. <laughs> and so we left the cross here for one more week just so I could kind of talk about it today because for us as Christians, we, we view the cross as something great. It's more than a symbol. It's a symbol of an event. The crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. It's the event that has saving power. And that, that's what I want to talk about today at the start, is the cross. See, the cross was along, around way before Jesus. The image of somebody being crucified was not something that started with Jesus. Many people have been crucified. It was the object of crucifixion. See, the cross for the people living in Jesus' times in the first century would have been very confused if they showed up here today and saw us having a cross on our shirt or a cross around our necklace. They wouldn't know why we would do that. For them, it was the object of what those who deserved the death penalty died upon. It was the form of death for those doing such heinous things that they couldn't just be put in prison. And that's, for some reason, what we've chosen to wear around our necklaces. Some people get it tattooed. Funny story about people getting it tattooed on them. My my brother has a tattoo of it, which is besides the fact, but me and a couple of my friends, we get together every Valentine's Day just because we thought we had no hope of ever getting married and uh, they're, they're still we're all still blown away as you guys are, but but we would get together around every Valentine's Day and we'd go to the movies, we'd go out to eat, we'd go to St. Louis and just have a fun day or two over there and hang out. And uh, one time we, we got downtown. We went to this restaurant downtown, St. Louis, and it was a little touristy trap type of place, but there was a tattoo shop down the road. And we, we play this game, and, you know, it's kind of just whoever chickens out first or whatnot, but we played this game, and I asked Joe, my friend Joe, I said, Joe, have you ever thought about getting a tattoo? And we start talking about tattoos, and by the end of it, I had convinced Joe to go down the street and get a tattoo. The only stipulation was, though, I had to get one too. And I think I texted Jeff that night and said, what would the church say if I got a tattoo? And he texted me back and said, they'd probably ask you how much money that tattoo cost and how many kids in Africa you could have fed for it or something like that. (laughs) I believe was his response. And I guess God was really looking over us because sometimes we do stupid things in life and and I, I don't know if we would have gone through with it. I'm sure I would have chickened out by the end of it. But we got in the tattoo parlor, and thankfully they said they weren't taking any more walk-ins today. And I think Joe and I both looked at each other and were like, oh, man, bummer. And so I avoided getting a cross. I, I had a design of what I was going to get at that time, but I avoided that, thankfully. And and so, But people get this tattooed on them, the cross, because it's so powerful and it's so significant for us in our lives. 
It's the symbol of our faith. Because the cross that we see, we don't just see wood. We see what it represents. We see with the cross the power. The power that it has. Billy Graham said one time, without resurrection, the cross is meaningless. Without the resurrection of Christ, the cross is just a symbol of death. It's like an electric chair, maybe. It's something nobody would think was significant. It was just a point in time of some guy named Jesus dying on a cross. But God and Jesus, they do this cool thing where they transform things. And so I want to read a verse for you today from Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Because the God we served didn't just die on the cross, He raised. And that's why the cross is significant to us today. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. This is, our, this is kind of our theme verse for our youth groups. And so we talked about this on Wednesday night, and I didn't even catch it whenever I was getting ready for Wednesday and for Sunday that it was the same verse. But Jesus transforms. He transforms this cross from wood, from an image of death, from something somebody would be impaled upon, to hope. There's power in the cross. Power that God puts there. For if Jesus did not resurrect, this cross has no power. He transforms the cross from something of death and despair to something of life and hope. Romans 12 is not not really about a cross though. I'm just using it to show us how God transforms the cross though. Romans 12 is about people. Romans 12 is about transforming people's lives. And so later on, Paul writes to the church of Colossae. And in Colossians chapter 3, he writes and tells them how to be transformed. He gives them a little bit more information on this transformation he can form. Can... I can't think of the word there. I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. But he tells them how to be transformed. And he tells them what he means by it. And in chapter 3, verses 5 through 10, he says, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices, and have put on a new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Put to death this stuff, he says. He says, put these things to death. And when I read this list and I see these things such as greed and anger, filthy language, these aren't godly characteristics. What I see in those, those are Holton characteristics. Those are things that I've had in my life before. Those are things that I see around me in this earth of people who are lost. Those are not the characteristics of the cross. Those are not the characteristics of a Christian. But rather, those are the characteristics of the lost. Those are the characteristics that I once had. I see myself there. I don't see the transformation. And so Paul continues on, picking up the story there in chapter, or in chapter 3, verse 12 of Colossians. He says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved... Clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. For as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Those are God's characteristics. See, those aren't Holton qualities. Those aren't qualities that I have because I'm Holton and I'm human. Those are qualities that I can have because I'm a Christian and I have God in me. I can have compassion. I can have forgiveness. I'll skip over patience, but I can have love. We can have these things because God gives them to us. There's a verse in the beginning of Acts in chapter 3 where the 
disciples, the apostles now, are walking by a man who's crippled. And Jesus has already left them and gone into heaven. Pentecost has come. The Spirit has come. And this beggar says, heal me. Can you, or he says, can you give me money? Can you give me money? What can you give me? And the disciples look at him and they say, we have no money. But what we do have is we have the power of Christ. And so they had Christ and they had power through Christ to save him. And so the God, the God I serve, the reason I'm crazy about God is because He's transforming lives. I serve the God of transformations, the God of love, the God who can wash us white as snow. You see, because of what God has, because of what God has done on the cross has transformed me today. It all starts with that original transformation of taking something such an object to something of power. And this, this is my story of, of my God and how He has transformed me. And so this week, what I, what I pray for you this week is that as you go out, you're transformed. This isn't a transformation of necessarily just becoming saved, but God is continually transforming us. God is continually working us into His image, molding us into His creation, His desired image, as Colossians said. And so my my goal for you guys today is to go away and be transformed this week. Because if God can transform some wood and make it into a symbol that some goofy tall guy would wear on a Sunday morning around his neck to preach in at a church, He can surely continue to transform your lives every day. Let's pray. I'll have Kenny come up and close us with a song. Lord, we just thank You. Uh, We thank You for loving us. And Lord, we thank You for transforming us. Lord, I ask that You allow us to know that You are the God of transformations. You are the God of love. And Lord, You you put all that to us. Uh, Lord, it's for the cross. Without Your resurrection, uh, the cross is just an object. But with Your resurrection, Lord, the cross, it's power. It gives us hope of one day being reunited with You. And so, Lord, allow us to live in that hope and allow us to be transformed by that hope. Lord, I just pray this in Your name.